Hi, my name is Tim Parody. I'm with the Center for Digital Strategies, and we're here with Ray Kearns from Pfizer. He's the uh, VP of Corporate Communications. Thank you for having us, Tim. And thanks for coming. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit about social technology and how you're using it with the company. Um, tell me a little bit about the role you see uh, social playing at Pfizer. So we've taken an early lead, I think, in our industry to adapt to social media channels because what we're seeing is this is what the end user, and in our case, people who are looking at our products, the physicians, the patients, the NGOs that we work with around the world, they're utilizing these channels. Who will we decide that they're not for us? Um, so we're engaging because the people we're trying to reach are directly engaging, and those numbers are going north every day. Interesting. You are also in a uh, obviously very regulated business, so you have limitations on some of the things that you can do. That's true. Um, in terms of the way you communicate with potential uh, customers, with patients. Um, what, how have you been able to sort of strike that balance? What have you been able to do? We've been very careful. The FDA, the EMEA in Europe um, have not given what we'll call stringent enough guidelines for us to feel comfortable to do certain things. But what we're not waiting um, on is taking the channels, utilizing them to talk about our corporate responsibility efforts we have around the globe, not just in the States, but around the globe. Talking about um, if one of our executives are out speaking, whether it be at a university, such as, let's say, they're up at Dartmouth at Tuck, taking those, those, those publicly available information and retweeting it out, putting it up on Facebook, putting it up on YouTube. One of the greatest challenges we face in our industry is that people don't know who we are and what we do. You know our name, but you're not sure actually how we do what we do. So what we're trying to do is open up a little bit more, the kimono, some would say, give you more insight into who we are all these wonderful people who on a daily basis commit their entire lives to try and find a new medicine that'll help make, make your life easier. And so these channels are actually very helpful to us because people are going to the internet and they're going to these social channels looking for answers on some very tough things like medicines and disease and we want to be there. We want to be part of the group that's engaged in the dialogue. And at the same time, it's a, you know, it's an interesting world, but it's also a dangerous world. There are a lot of uh, potential pitfalls for social uh, if the wrong information were to be released or, or somebody were to say something that, weren't, that, uh, that wasn't flattering. How do you, you know, grapple right. with these issues? I think many companies start off as we did, which is you spend a year or so really listening, going into the channel, seeing what's being said, seeing the tone, understanding who are the thought leaders. Who, there's a, sort of this rule out there. It's what uh, some would call it the 99-1 rule. 90% 90 of people are sort of watching and listening. There's about 9% that are actively engaged but there's 1% really that seems to be controlling most of the conversations and really the folks are listening to. We want to know who those people are. We want to talk to them. We want to engage with them. We want to ensure that the information that is out there is accurate because particularly in an area like science, science is quite difficult. It's fact, look, on a daily basis, there's new medicines coming to market. Do you really know everything you should know? These channels are, are put in place because people have said, I want to communicate in a different way. And we as a company, Pfizer, 170-year-old company, are always trying to find the new technology is going to help us engage more with those groups that are out there in the market. Interesting. Yeah, I can imagine um, that is <laughs> going to have some interesting meetings in your office trying to figure out how you how you deal with all these things. But, so but, but the challenge becomes, as, as you mentioned earlier, when we won't blame our regulator for not giving us the information. What we're saying is uh, lack of that guidance at this point there's a certain level we can actually take our engagement to on the social channels. So we can probably take it up just before the part where we're talking about our products. However, if you as a patient or physician are engaged in one of these channels and you mention one of our products, we're listening. And what we're doing is we're taking those dialogues and we're handing them over to our medical team and let them actually then re-engage in the conversation as opposed to a communications person or someone from investor relations. Right which makes a lot of sense. What would be um, sort of the one area you think is the greatest challenge or, or maybe the greatest opportunity? Either way you want to go with the question well, it, in terms it, of social. It's both. Um, it's both. It's the challenge I think that we face in our industry, and we're very specific because we are regulated, the challenge we face is we are not allowed to actively promote any of our medicines on the Internet without fair balance language. So there's no guidance. There's, there's guidance on advertising on, let's say, CNN.com but there's no guidance on how do you get in, in, involved in a dialogue conversation. So that's a huge challenge. And when the guidelines come down, we'll be ready to go because we've spent years setting the foundation up, listening to people, having following others, having folks follow us. But that is also obviously the challenge because while we're being conservative in that little area, 
My hope is that the others in our industry are as well because the challenge we think is if another company takes it beyond where they're supposed to go, we're all going to be held responsible. And that becomes a big challenge for us. And so there's a few of us on the social media side and communications that spend some time talking to each other in our industry, just making sure, you know, critiquing each other's work and how it's going. And that's a positive thing because at the end of the day, it's about the patients, it's about the science, and it's about the medicine. And we can never lose sight of that. You want details and information, you deserve the information. Interesting. That's great. Well, Ray Karens from Pfizer, we appreciate you coming to Tuck. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time.